Okay, let's talk about the HESI exam. And obviously we're going to be talking about uh, the mathematics uh, section of this exam. So if you're watching this video, um, I'm just going to assume that you are a soon-to-be nursing student because the HESI, along with uh, a few other tests, are essentially um, entrance exams to get into nursing school. So congratulations on your choice of being a nurse. We certainly need uh, as many good nurses as we can possibly muster in this country. So um, part of being a nurse is, you know, you're going to have to be able to be uh, pretty comfortable with math. Now, I'm not going to, uh, I might just real quick, my background is I'm a math teacher. I teach from middle school all the way through college. Uh, and so this is what I do. But as a nurse, here, you're not going to need to know, you know, algebra, I mean, a lot of amount of algebra, geometry, advanced algebra to do your to do your job. Now, if you continue to, um, you know, uh, your continue your education, maybe you want to get a master's in nursing, etc. Well, you know, you may be working with more complicated math. Either way, you need to be uh, well-rounded in your education, and you need to be comfortable with a, a decent level of math, uh, especially for the HESI exam, because you're going to have to really, you know, show that you have a good mathematics background at the around the high school level. So you want to have a really strong high school uh, math background. Now, if you're uh, struggling with math or you're uncomfortable with it, I actually offer a complete um, HESI uh, math prep course. I'll leave the link in the description of this video if that's something you'd, uh, you'd like to uh, check out. But in the meantime, let's get to this problem. So one of the things that uh, one part of math that you're going to have to be really, really good at is working with ratios, proportions, units of measure, conversion, etc. So this is a, a really, uh, this, this part of math you're definitely going to want to be a, an expert at. So this is a basic um, proportion problem and let's go ahead and see if you can solve it. So you might want to try to pause the video and, and uh, you know, spend a minute or two to see if you can solve for the variable x and then I'm going to go through it. Okay, so so this is a proportion, but before we get even into how to solve this, what is a proportion? Okay, so terms that you need to be really comfortable with is a ratio, a rate, and a proportion. So let's do a quick review and then we'll actually do this particular problem. So ratios and rates are basically fractions. Okay, so let's Let's do this. Let's do uh, 1 over 10 and 1 over 10. Okay. However, uh, ratio and rates, just instead of just being a fraction, which is numbers, the, this doesn't really tell me anything. Uh, both the ratio and rates will have units or measuring stuff, units of measure. Okay. So now what we're going to be measuring, this is going to uh, determine whether it's a ratio or a rate. So a rate is um, where the units of measure in our fraction are different. So for example, let's say um, I have 1 over 10. Let's say this is 1 mile per 1 or 10 hours. Okay. So this fraction bar here, we would think of as the word per. Okay. So this is an example of a rate. This is just a quick review, okay? Uh, obviously, I'm, I'm going to teach this much more extensively in my uh, courses, but just for this particular problem, this is it's worth the time to just uh, spend this uh, moment reviewing this because most people confuse. They'll they'll call rates ratios and ratios rates and purport they're kind of you know they, they throw these terms around without really knowing what they are. So, a rate is where the units of measure are different. So you can see I have one mile, a mile's distance, and then 10 hours. Hours is a measurement of time. So completely different units here in a fraction. So I have one mile per 10 hour. So maybe that's like a turtle, right? Like going really slow along the street. It's going one mile per every 10 hours, right? So that's a rate. All right. So now let's talk about ratios. So a ratio is where the units of the measure are the same. And this can be a little bit deceiving uh, initially because sometimes basically a ratio is where we're counting the same um, 
concept. So for example, let's say I have one teacher per or two 10 students. Okay. So I have one teacher, two. Okay, two is a good indication that you're dealing with a um, ratio. So this would be my student uh, t uh, student teacher ratio. Okay, one teacher per or two 10 students. So you're saying, okay, well, I, I'm counting different uh, units here, or I'm counting a t uh, t one teacher and students. So these are different units of measure. Well, that's not true, okay? We're both counting here human beings. We're counting people. So one person to 10 people people all right so here we're counting distance and this is time here this is a person and this is a person okay so a ratio is when we have a fraction where the numerator and denominator we're really counting the same noun the same uh, concept okay so rates and ratios so now let's talk about very quickly what a proportion is so a proportion is basically two equal fractions so I'm going to write the fraction down one half and I want you to tell me another fraction that is equal to one half all right that's we don't it's not written as one over two but, but it's what's another fraction that's equal to one half how about five over ten okay or three over six or two over four there's any number of examples so a proportion by definition is exactly is two equal uh, fractions or two equals uh, two equal rates or ratios okay because these guys here are fractions so this is what we're dealing with right here so what I'm saying in this particular problem if we look I have one fraction yeah this fraction has a variable in it but don't, don't, don't let that throw you off and it's equal to another fraction so I have one fraction equal to another fraction this is a proportion so the way we saw proportions is we use something called the cross product. We're basically going to multiply across just like this. And we use a different color here. Okay. So let's do this here. There's 1 times 10. 1 times 10 is going to be equal to what? That's 10. And let's go this way. We're going to multiply crosswise. It's the product, right? 2 times 5. And 2 times 5 is 10. So 10 is equal to 10. So one of the properties in a proportion is that when we multiply across diagonally like this, that the result of this equation are going to be equal, okay, the left and right hand side. So we're going to use that property here, the cross product. It's the most important thing you really need to know about proportions uh, to solve for x. So we're going to multiply this way, and we're going to multiply this way, and then we're going to solve this basic equation. All right, so 5 times 2x, let's write that here, 5 times 2x, oops, that's 2 times 2x, how about 5 times 2x, and that's equal to 9 times 2, all right? So we just cleared the fractions, and, now we just, uh, and we're able to do this using that property of the cross product, okay? When we had identified that this is a proportion, and now we went ahead and cleared the fractions and now we got to solve this basic remaining equation. So 5 times 2x is 10x equal 9 times 2 is 18. So to solve for x, I'm going to go ahead and divide both sides of the equation by 10. So x is equal to 18 over 10, but we want to always reduce our answers. So 2 goes into 18, 9, and 2 goes into 10, 5. Okay, so 9 fifths would be our answer for this proportion. And that's basically it. So kind of a quick review on um, a particular math topic that you really are going to need to know really, really well. So that's why I spent a little bit more time uh, with proportions and rates and ratios. But you really do need more practice. Um, if, you, if you understand this, you're like, OK, I get that. That's not enough uh, to, you know, and there's many other um, math topics you know for the HESI exam that you want to really study for because although you may not be using a lot of algebra geometry um, you know maybe in your career directly for the HESI exam there are there are you know uh, there is a, a, a decent amount of high school level mathematics so you know you want to study um, you know completely for it so if you're interested um, in checking out my uh, HESI math prep course I'll leave the link in the description of this video I literally have hundreds of videos on my YouTube channel, so hopefully you'll uh, consider subscribing. That will help you out. Okay, T ton of different math videos. I love teaching math, as you can probably tell. 
So hopefully you'll consider subscribing. If you like this video, I definitely would appreciate a thumbs up. And then let me know how things are going with your uh, exam preparation. You know, do you find math difficult? You know, you're struggling in a particular area or maybe um, uh, you're going to be t taking another exam because there are other uh, nursing exams out there, entrance exams. And as far as I can tell through my own uh, research and just talking to people that apparently um, it's becoming more and more competitive to get into nursing school. And it doesn't surprise me. I mean, it's a, um, a good career to have. I mean, um, so a lot of people are, are applying to want to become nurses. It's getting more competitive. So what does that mean? That means that you're going to have to, you know, make yourself stand out. And the way you're going to be, you know, one of the ways, a significant way um, of standing out is to have great, you know, entrance exam scores. So take this test seriously. I'm sure you are. But if you're, you know, okay in math, you don't want to be okay. You want to be great. Okay. So anyways, I wish you all the best uh, on the HESI exam and in your uh, nursing career. Thanks for your time and have a great day.